Alright, so welcome to this tutorial for the Ultimate Grass and Meadow World Builder. Now, let me start by saying, um, while this product is very uh, massive in scale, and uh, you know it has over 3 billion effective polygons in each scene, um, it's also uh, surprisingly light on resources. And, and that was by design. Um, as I was developing this product, my goal was to uh, create uh, a view like scenes, you know, very um, expansive uh, scenes, and yet um, also scenes that can be run on mediocre computers. And, and that's all thanks to a special instancing feature um, that I discovered as I was developing this product that basically it allows you to instance thousands upon thousands of objects with hardly any slowdown in the viewport and um, without having to wait you know minutes uh, just to see what's going on in iRay. Uh, so big thanks to plugin developers for harnessing this this instancing feature and allowing uh, developers like me to um, begin pushing the limits of DAS Studio um, dimensionally in, in, in this way and polygon wise. Um, so anyway, let's just jump right in here. So to begin, um, I recommend using the Content Library tab um, only because that's what I designed the product in and I sort of organized everything by category. So in the Individual Parts folder you have all of the parts um, that compose an entire scene so you can essentially build a scene from scratch. Um, whereas in the pre-built scenes folder um, you have your pre-built scenes so these contain all of the parts and you can get going quickly by simply just loading a pre-built scene and of course you have your materials um, and your anti-blocks um, folder for if you purchased the uh, iReal animated add-on um, you'll also have the the anti blocks to uh, animate the the grass patches uh, and the bees. Okay, so um, let's begin by loading a pre-built scene. So what I'll do is um, I guess I'll just load this uh, mid-morning wide pathway. And as you can see here, the inner terrain is in the upper left of the thumbnail. Um, so here is the single hill um, with the overhead light set and uh, materials. Um, so this should all be pretty straightforward. So I'm just going to double click on this one here. Alright, so this is what you'll be greeted with um, when you uh, load a pre-built scene. Here we have the, um, the light set. This is the mid-morning light set. Um, the outer terrain um, object and the scatter objects for the outer terrain. If I twirl this down, these are all the, the scatter objects that are scattered on the, on the terrain. The rock, of course, uh, which marks the center point of the map. Um, the inner terrain, which has the uh, wide pathway uh, morph set to 100%, as you can see here. Um, the scatter objects for the inner terrain, twirl this down. All of them are turned on by default except the cut grass, as you can see, um, and the cameras that, uh, that go along with the scene. Okay, so uh, these are all the components that 
uh, compose a, a pre-built scene. All right, so um, let's start by, I just want to show you, um, if you're working in the texture shaded mode, it's helpful to turn on the wire texture shaded uh, only because it helps to give you a better sense of the terrain. Um, so that's that's what I recommend for texture shading. Um, but I I normally work in iRay, and as I mentioned um, as I mentioned earlier, um, this product allows me to uh, to work in iRay more than more than I initially uh, would have thought. Um, only because of the little overhead uh, of the instancing um, that I that I was talking about earlier, and let's go ahead and switch our max samples to 20. Um, this is what I normally do when I'm developing a product, just to help keep my GPUs cool and not to overtax them too much. So. Um, <clears throat> As you can see, you know, iRay loaded up the materials fairly quickly, and um, it's it's rendering. You know, I can pan in the viewport, and um, it's not that bad. I mean, it's, it's workable, it's manageable. So um, it's certainly faster than. Um, some other uh, environmental products that I've used in the past and environmental products that that are much smaller in scale too um, you know because keep in mind um, this product and I can I can zoom out here and show you this product is is very massive in scale um, just for reference, a, a football field is about 58,000 square feet, uh, whereas this is um, 436,000 square feet. Um, so this uh, this is much much larger than a football field, you know, by a factor of eight, something like that. All right, so let's um, turn IRA back on. And I think what we'll do now is just manipulate things around a little bit, maybe change some materials, um, and, and just show you, you know, how, how easy it is to work um, uh, it, it with this product. So um, let's switch our camera from this main camera uh, to maybe maybe the promo one. This is one of the camera angles that I used um, in one of the promo my promo shots. So um, let's start by changing the inner terrain ground. So right now um, our inner terrain material is on this dense grass uh, default. So let's change that maybe to um, natural trails. Okay, so you can see um, how easy and quick that was to change. And, and make an adjustment. So now let's um, also change our um, our plant material. Actually, let's put that back um, to something else. So we'll go to our grass grass patches in our materials folder. And maybe change our meadow grass to um, I don't know um, maybe this dry material, and we'll we'll do the same I guess for let's change all the plants, clovers, and 
a orchard plant. Okay, so we just changed um, all the plants to a, a dry material. So you can see how um, how easy it is to do. Let's undo everything here. And um, and again, you know, I'm working directly in IRA, um, and it's all fairly fairly quick. And if you want to speed up the scene even further, um, you can hide more elements. Like, for example, this outer terrain, if you're not using it, like if right now the camera, there, the, the outer terrain is not in view in this camera shot. And if that's going to be, if this is going to be your beauty render, you can hide all of the elements that are are not in view and this will speed up your scene even more um, and this is what I typically do when I'm working in in this in this and not using iray um, I'll hide everything that's not going to be in the shot so just another tip there okay now uh, let's say that you want to turn off the orchard plants. Well that's easy enough to do. You simply hide the uh, source plant um, and that turns off all of the instances of the orchard plants. So that would essentially hide all of the orchard plants in this scene. Um, and, and there you go. So. Uh, it's fairly easy to just turn off and turn on plants that um, you want to hide or you want to see. Okay. Now, let's say I wanted to change um, the the light set. So that's um, easy enough. I would. I could simply delete the mid-morning light set or uh, turn it off and then um, go into our individual parts folder and lights and uh, choose a new uh, light set. So uh, let's say for example I wanted this midday overhead. Just double click on that and it loads um, a separate uh, new light set into the scene. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, as I noted, um, each terrain um, has uh, morphs that correspond uh, to them. So right now, um, the uh, the wide pathway is at 100%, and that's only because we loaded the um, the wide pathway pre-built scene. And all of the pre-built scenes are simply, um, uh, you know, these these morphs applied to the terrain. And of course, you can create your own custom terrain by mixing and matching these morphs, um, which I, I detail in the included PDF on how to um, rescatter the objects onto a custom terrain that you make. And that's that's all pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's go ahead and start a new scene from scratch. And uh, what we'll do here is simply um, load some grass patches, 
flowers, orchard plant, and let's animate them. Okay, so this is easy enough to do. Um, if you're familiar with my other um, iReal products, uh, of course, right now they're static. They don't move. So um, to animate them, you just simply add them to the timeline, and then in your iReal Ultimate Grass and Meadows and Any Blocks folder, you um, drag the respective any block onto the timeline. Okay, you can do the same for each object. So this this should be be familiar to you already. Um, and that is all there is to, to animating. And note here, um, if I zoom in, you can kind of see th the subtle details of what's going on here. You know, there's twisting, um, there's wobbling. So, a lot of little things go into um, making this this animation uh, as realistic as possible, and of course, it loops. You can um, <coughs> it's a perfectly seamless loop. And, and of course you can manipulate um, as you would. You can s speed it up and slow it down. Um, so this is it's all pretty straightforward. Okay. And that is the Ultimate Grass and Meadow World Builder.